What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel today. Today we are talking the F1 2024 season. It is here. It is back. F1 is upon us again. I just realized I gotta go grab something. My hat. Uh, did I not go for my lamp? I did. Look. I'd look stupid with this hat on. I look stupid with hats on anyways, but I mean, then again, I'm used to focusing on my hair 24-7 and seeing a hat above it is like, whoa, what the hell? But, um, I don't know. I guess we'll like, can I leave this in the, no, you won't see it there. I'll leave it there for now, I guess. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> this is going to be a blooper section of the video. I'll leave it. Where can I leave it? Just, I'll just leave it on my head. Screw it. But, um. Yeah, no, these are my predictions for the F1 2024 season. Uh, I'm going to go through my constructors first and then give you the drivers. The constructors will give you a rough idea of how I see the driver's championship going. But yeah, without further delay, let's get straight into these predictions. Here you have my constructors standings predictions for this upcoming season. At the back, we have pass and stake. Well, Kick Sauber, as I like to call him. Man, these sponsors are getting too much. Excuse me. From 7th to 8th, we have Williams and Alpine. Oh my god. <laughs> Burps. But, um... From 6th to 5th, uh, we have Aston Martin and these or Racing Bulls, as we should call them. Uh, formerly known as Alpha Tari. And uh, in the 2-4 to four section, we have McLaren. Mercedes and Ferrari and the Red Bull leading the way in the Constructors Championship position. So let's go through and talk about this. I tried to put everybody like in the in the tier that like I think they're going to be like competing with other drive other constructors with. So when it comes to the Sauber and um, how do I or Haas lineup, I just don't think they have enough of what it takes to upgrade or make good improvements on the car. I mean, I think they're on the decline instead of the incline. I mean, with Haas, Kevin Magnussen was driving the 2020 or the supposed 2024 package last season. And you've seen how well that went. He got crushed by Hulkenberg. I, th I still think Hulkenberg will have the upper hand on Kevin Magnussen, but uh, it's not a good look for Haas to start this. I don't think this is going to be a good season for anyone at Haas, personally. I mean, Gunter's gone now, so we'll see what happens there, but rough times to be a Haas fan, but when it comes to Sauber, I like, I mean, I like where what they have at management, but for drivers, I don't think it's cutting. Be I mean, I like Valtteri, I like Zhou Guangyu, but like... I don't know how to say this, but like, what's the purpose? Like, what, what is your purpose of driving? I mean, it feels like Zhou Wang Yu's only purpose of driving is to just drive at the Chinese Grand Prix. And Valtteri Bottas is just living the life. He gets to drive F1 cars and stick his ass out on calendars. Like, like I like Andreas Seidel. Like, I do like the Sauber organization. I like where they're going with like a personnel standpoint. But I feel like personally, they got to get some new drivers in there. Teo Pocher, he would be great for the Sauber program. Who would they get to be alongside Teo Pocher? I don't know, but personally, I think Sauber uh, need to make big changes on the car and changes with their drivers before they make any big upgrades for say. But from seventh through eighth, I have Williams and Alpine. I think Williams and Alpine will be competing a lot this season. Uh, let's start with Williams first. I mean, James Valls. F1 genius. That man, smartest guy in the paddock, probably. He is an absolute genius. He could gen. I think Williams could genuinely make, like, he's going to be that guy who takes Williams up a consistent level every season, and they're going to be, like, in the top four again before you know it. I, I, I can see that, to be honest. But when it comes to Williams, I mean, I like Albon, I like Sargent. I really, I mean, I do think Logan will probably be most improved driver this year. I could see Logan Sargent having a really good season compared to last season. 
personally, I can see big improvements on the Logan Sargent, but I don't know. I mean, if they finish eighth in Constructors, I feel like they're just going to be back and forth with Alpine a lot. Like, I do think Williams will improve. I just think the teams in front of them are improving more. I mean, the team I'm about to talk about next, you could say, is a little bit on the decline. But, yeah, I mean, I like... I like where Williams are going. They're on an upward trajectory. They have a good pairing of drivers. If they can keep a hold of Alex Alvin, they will be set for the future, that's for sure. But yeah, I'm gonna say that's what's up with Williams. When it comes to um, Alpine, I gotta take this hat off, holy hell. But um, when it comes to Alpine, I really like, um, uh, well, their driver, I really like Pierre Gasly, personally. Esteban Alcon, I'm not so high on. But I, you can't deny his driving talent. His driving talent's definitely there. The pressure was really on Alcon last season. And Gasly got the better of him. So, I, it's hard for me to, like, you'll see this in my driver predictions later, but I do think Gasly will have the better of Alcon again this season. But Alpine, it, they just, I feel like if they just stop finger pointing at the next person to just just say oh you're the reason why we're not winning you're the reason why we're not top three in constructors you're the reason we're not on the podium it's like maybe if you stop blaming someone else and blame yourself and work on what you got maybe you'd go somewhere maybe 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 it's worth a shot what do i know i'm just a guy talking about f1 on a friggin youtube video but like Alpine, man. I There's so much potential for this team, but it's just going to waste. I, if they upgrade that engine, they would genuinely have a really good car because, I mean, like, they didn't have the greatest engine last year, and they, they were, comp like, you could see it on tracks like Monaco and Zandvoort when Ocon and Gasly were on the podium. Like, a, like Alpine have something really good there, but... It's the complete opposite of what I think of Sauber. The drivers are great, the management is awful. But let's get to number six. I think uh, Racing Bulls and Aston Martin will be head-to-head -head a lot this season. I do think Racing Bulls will take uh, the advantage on Aston Martin this season, mainly because of how aligned they are with Red Bull. Excuse me, but the way I see it this year, uh, I think Fernando Alonso was definitely good enough to pull Aston Martin out of them, like out of this rut. Because I mean, they're they're like their cars on the decline right now. That's the way I see it. But it, it pains me to say it, but I, I hate the fact that Lance Stroll is the only Canadian F1. Oh my God! There was a time where Stroll and Latifi were the two Canadians in F1. Like Jesus, we're. I need to hop in an F1 car, bro. I, I really do. I, maybe Lando Norris can tell me if I if I wanked yet after I broke my hand, but I don't know, man. Like, I like what Aston Martin have got. They got a solid car. They've got one solid driver, and they've got a really rich owner who can pretty much buy them anything they want. But when it comes to Aston, man, when it comes to Aston, I see Alonzo doing well, Stroll not so much. But here's the thing, uh, they have consistent. Alonzo has more than enough consistency. Stroll's got no consistency. He's either doing really, or has a really good race, or has a really bad race, or he's just completely crashed out of the picture. That's last land Stroll in a nutshell for you. Chances are he's either having a really bad race or he's crashed out in every land Stroll. But uh, I can see Alonso having a good season, not so much for Lance Stroll. If Alonso does s decide to stay in F1 beyond this season and not retire, I think Alonso will leave Aston Martin personally, but I don't know, maybe he'll take Hamilton's seat of Ferrari. But the team I think will beat uh, Aston Martin is uh, the racing bulls of Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda. What a driver lineup, by the way. That's That driver lineup is hella underrated. I do think Yuki Tsunoda is going to be... Well, he's just going to be Yuki Tsunoda, man. He's re, He's been Red Bull's project driver since 2021. And you can see how much 
especially those years under Gasly, you can see how much Yuki developed and really became his own his own great character in a way. Uh, props to Yuki Tsunoda, man. He's developed a lot since he came into the sport. And I mean, if you've got a team that believes in you like that, I believe you're set for good things if you've got the talent. And as long as you work hard, you'll be golden. But let's be real here. I think these guys are fighting for the 2020 or 2025 Red Bull seat. I do think Paris is out at Red Bull this season. I, I, I'm sorry, Sergio. Love you, but I really do. But I do think the winner or whoever's faster between these two will be partnering Max Verstappen in 2025 at Red Bull. And I do think Daniel Ricciardo will beat Yuki Sonoda this season. Yes, Max and Daniel reunited. That would be insane, but... Man, Daniel showed me at the end of last season, like, the old Ricardo's still in there. The old Ricardo's still in there. The old Ricky Bobby that we all love oh so much, he's still there. Ricky Bobby is still there. <laughs> and I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him do well this year. I think he's going to get a top 10 in points finish. I think him and Fernando Alonso are going to be head-to-head -head a lot this season. Like, the way... Why I say racing goals are going to finish ahead of Aston Martin this year is because I think both have fairly similar cars. I see uh, Ricardo and Alonso fighting a lot, but I think Yuki will be a lot closer to Ricardo and Alonso than Lance Stroll will be. You get what I mean? So, I got racing bulls finishing in fifth place in the Constructors' Championship. But let's go on to the second through four teams. I mean, for this part, I want to address... I've on, The only part of F1 I've seen is testing and FP1 and FB2 apart Bahrain. I waited till uh, those sessions were done till I give my... Uh, predictions on everything and I've got McLaren I mean I uh, it's gonna be such a tight battle between these three teams but I think McLaren finished P4 and constructors Piastri Norris what a lineup if if they don't butt heads McLaren are set for a good five six seven eight years at least like McLaren have a solid driver lineup man I mean I just question after FP1 or FP1 and FP2 that uh, I think people were underestimating Mercedes, man. I really do think people were underestimating Mercedes because they were top five in both sessions. Like maybe Mercedes have got something under the hood that we don't expect. So that's why I put Mercedes P3. I mean, people are gonna say, "Oh, it's just a lame duck year for Lewis Hamilton. Nothing's gonna go right." Lewis Hamilton won Mercedes seven championships. Well, seven constructors and six drivers, but still. That many championships and you don't think Mercedes are gonna want Lewis Hamilton to go out on a bang? You think Lewis Hamilton's not gonna wanna leave Mercedes on a bang? Like, think for two seconds here, folks. Think, it's, oh my God, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Um, I don't get why people are saying that. I mean, it's not as toxic as the McLaren days. Hamilton just said he's like, I'm going to go race for Ferrari. I'm sorry, but I'm going to go race for Ferrari. I mean, there's going to be no hard... F I don't think there will be any hard feelings there, but when you have George Russell and Lewis Hamilton in the same team, good things will happen. Those are two very, very good drivers. Arguably the best driver lineup on the grid. In my opinion, I honestly think it is. But, I mean, if Russell developed a bit more racecraft, I think that would be the best driver lineup on the grid. But, yeah, I've got Mercedes finishing P3, McLaren P4, but finishing second is my beloved Scuderia Ferrari. Oh, Ferrari, Ferrari, Ferrari. I love Fred Vasseur. <laughs> I really do. I mean... <clears throat> I might have false hope from testing. I might just, but the car does look better this year. And I do think, especially considering how bad the start of the season was and how good the end of the season looked, I think we can s score second place in Constructors uh, just nice and smoothly. I really do. I mean, Carlos Sainz doesn't have a contract for next year. He's out at Ferrari. He's going to be auditioning for other teams. He's going to be giving it full beans which is 
excuse me, for Ferrari, <clears throat> it's a good situation, but a bad situation, because what if he's fighting with Leclerc? He's not going to back down just because Charles Leclerc's in front of him, you know what I mean? But And over these last two years, I think uh, Charles Leclerc has developed a lot, you know? All that crap that he's gone through with the bad strategies and the horrible freaking miscues. I think which Charles has really matured so much as a driver. I mean, the Las Vegas Grand Prix showed you everything you need to know about how how I think Charles Leclerc is going to perform in 2024. I really do think he's going to... I don't think he'll make the title fight close, but I think he'll bring some intrigue to the front of the field to the Red Bulls. I will say that. And speaking of which, Red Bull number one for Stappen and Perez, P1 and P2. Well, I mean, I, I, I shouldn't say that. Because, spoiler alert, that might not be the case. But, um... It's it's hard not to predict Max Verstappen uh, and Red Bull, it, Max Verstappen, Red Bull, Sergio Perez. It's hard not to predict them first in constructors from what we've seen in the testing and what we've seen last season. Like even in what we saw in 2022, then this Red Bull is freaking it's something else, man. Red Bull is something else. Let me tell you guys, like. It's gonna take a lot to dethrone them. Maybe in 25, 2026 is probably when they're gonna be dethroned because of the engine regulations and Ford coming in. But those are my constructors' predictions. Uh, let's get on to the drivers. Well, you kind of got a rough estimate of it all, but with my constructors' championship standings, I mean, I'm I figured I might as well just like say where I think everyone's gonna finish. But Nico Holt. Or sorry, I have this the wrong way around. But Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg finishing 19th and 20th. I mean, I do think the Saubers will be faster than the Hasses, but I don't think they'll be much faster. They will get much more points. But I think Vautas will have the beating of Joe Sargent in P16, followed by Esteban Ocon P15, Alex Albin uh, P14, followed by Lance Stroll uh, P13, Pierre Gasly. I have in P12, Yuki Sonoda, I have in P11, uh, Fernando Alonso, I have in P10, Daniel Ricciardo in P9, Oscar Piastri in P8, George Russell P7, Carlos Sainz P6, Lewis Hamilton P5, Lando Norris P4, Sergio Perez P3, Charles Leclerc P2, Max Verstappen P1. Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't know how well I did on these last year, I'd have to go back and look, but I do think I'm going to do better this year. I'm going to go back and look at my predictions from last year, see how well I did. Give me two seconds. Okay, honestly, I didn't do as bad as I thought I would have. I mean, let's see. Uh, I think the one of the only blunders I had was Sergio Perez in... P6, Alonso P7, that that was a pretty good one. I had Ocon just beating Gasly, I mean, oh, I was close between those two. Norris and Piastri had P10 and P11. I mean, considering the start of the season, that's probably where they were on track to be, but all things considered, not that bad. I mean, Magnussen, I should have had Hulkenberg over Magnussen, but overall, not that bad. I mean, I think that we'll definitely improve upon it this year. I think this year is a little... It's going to be harder to predict than last season, but I think I've got some big improvements here, and I think this 2024 season, this is how the Drivers' Championship will end. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below, guys. I'm really looking forward to reading all your predictions for the F1 2024 season. F1 starts tomorrow. Uh, well, it starts in two days as of recording this. I'm recording this right after FP1 and FP2. So, yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And maybe this year I'll have an end-of-season reaction video. I was just so bummed out of F1 at the end of the season. I was like, oh my god, Verstappen won another one? Are you kidding me? But, oh well. Uh, let me know who you guys got uh, 1 through 20 in the comments down below. And yeah. 
I'll see you at the end of the season, guys. Enjoy this upcoming season. Don't forget to watch my F1 career mode videos if you're new to the channel. Give it a shot. I'm sure you'll like it. But until next time, guys, take care and peace.